In this video presentation, we will discuss about the classical swine fever, one of the important notifiable disease affecting pigs. These are some of the notifiable disease affecting pigs, listed by OIE. The notifiable disease means transmissible diseases that have serious potential and rapid spread, irrespective of national borders, and that are of major importance in the international trade of animals and animal products. Classical swine fever is also one of the notifiable diseases listed under classification. Flaviviridae family, classified under the Baltimore Group 4. Group 4 comprises of viruses with single stranded positive sense RNA genome. Some of the veterinary important viral diseases under this family are classical swine fever, bovine viral diarrhea, and border diseases under the genus Pestivirus. The diseases under the genus Pestivirus are non arthropod borne viral diseases. Whereas the diseases under the genus Flavivirus are arthropod borne viral diseases, which are yellow fever virus, West Nile virus, tick borne encephalitis virus, dengue virus, Zika virus, and others. In this lecture, we will discuss in detail on classical swine fever. The other names for this infection is hog cholera. This disease is caused by the genus Pestivirus of the family Flavivirinae. Based on tissue tropism, this virus is having target towards the endothelial tissues, so they are termed as endotheliotropic virus. This is a contagious viral disease, characterized by high fever, severe depression, multiple superficial, and internal hemorrhages in pigs, and wild boars. This infection is prevalent in Asia, Central, and South America, and parts of Europe. Virus Morphology This virus posse is spherical, that is icosahedral capsid, and also covered with lipid envelope all around. The entire virus is about 60 nanometer diameter. This lipid envelope is studded with glycoprotein spikes. These spikes are immunodominant proteins, which play a major role in the antigenicity, that is virus neutralizing antigens. Genomic Organization The genome is monopartite, single-stranded, and positive sense RNA. The genome length is 10 to 12 kilo base pair length. The 5' prime end is methylated, that is capped. And the 3' prime end possess, IRES internal ribosomal entry site, which form a loop structure. The differentiating features with the Dogavirida viral genomes is, here the structural protein coding gene R, toward 5' prime end, and the non-structural protein coding gene R, toward 3' prime end. Whereas, in Togavirida viral genome, it is vice versa. This virus is antigenically closely related with the other member of the genus Pestivirus such as, bovine viral diarrhea virus and border diseases virus. So, if a pig is exposed to the ruminant pestivirus, that is, bovine viral diarrhea virus, or border disease virus, on laboratory diagnosis, the test antibody will be reacting to the antigen, and shows false positive to the classical swine fever virus. This is because of presence of cross-neutralizing antibody between these viruses. This virus is classified based on their genetic variation, into five genotypes, and which is subclassified into 14 subgenotypes. This virus is classified based on their virulence into three strains. Highly virulent strain, which is responsible for the outbreaks with high morbidity and mortality. Moderately virulent strain, which is responsible for subacute or chronic infections. Low virulent strain, which is responsible for mild or inapparent infection, that may lead to reproductive failure or neonatal losses later. These are some of the classical swine fever virus strains. Alfred 187 strain. Alfred Tubingen strain. Brescia strain. Chinese laponized vaccine strain, also called as C strain. Japanese guinea pig adapted vaccine strain. And French Thiverville vaccine strain. Virus replication. This virus enters the host by fusing the viral envelope with the host cell membrane. During fusion, the viral glycoproteins may get integrated to the host membrane. Following entry, the virus replicates in the cytoplasm. Here, the genome is positive sense RNA, which are similar to mRNA. So, they can translate to viral proteins, or be infectious on its own. On the other side, the positive sense viral RNA are transcribed for complementary strand, for the transcription of positive sense viral RNA. Later, this transcribed positive sense viral RNA, and the translated viral proteins, self-assembles to form virion. Following assembly, virion released through budding from the host membrane. In the process of budding from the host membrane, the virion acquires their lipid envelope around. Physical inactivation. 
this virus get inactivated at the temperature of 65 degrees Celsius, for 30 minutes, or, at the temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, for 1 minutes. These viruses are also sensitive at the pH less than 3, or at the pH more than 10. This virus does not survive well outside the environment, as it is susceptible to sunlight, drying and ultraviolet radiation. Chemical inactivation. This virus is inactivated by the disinfectants like formalin, phenol, cresol, beta-propiolactone, sodium hypochlorite, sodium hydroxide and lipid solvents. Transmission. The blood, secretions, discharges, excretions, and meat from the infected animal, can act as the principal source of this virus. This virus is having the portal of entry, primarily through ingestion, and also through conjunctival mucous membrane, skin abrasions, genital transmission, and inseminations. The incubation is on an average of 3 to 7 days from the entry of virus, for the acute cases. But it may extend up to 3 months in chronic infections. Pathogenesis. Following entry of virus through ingestion, the virus does its initial replication in the epithelium of the crypts of tonsils and at the regional lymph nodes followed by viremia. And their next replication is at the lymphoid organs such as, spleen, lymph node, bone marrow, endothelial cells, and circulating leukocytes. Following secondary replication, the virus get distributed through the secondary viremia, to the epithelial cells, with subsequent viral shedding through secretions and excretions. Four forms of classical swine fever are observed. Per acute, acute, subacute, and chronic. These forms are classified based on the length of incubation and their severity. Per acute form. Seen in piglets. In this form young pigs may be found dead without any prior sign of illness. Acute form. Here, the animal initially will encounters, high fever. Huddling, weakness, anorexia, depression. Conjunctivitis. Constipation, then diarrhea. Skin hemorrhages, cyanosis. And death. On post-mortem examination, necrotic tonsil mottled lymph nodes, wedge-shaped splenic infarct, pinpoint hemorrhages in kidneys, that gives turkey egg appearance, bronchopneumonia, perivascular cuffing in brain are observed. The picture showing the symptoms like, huddling, weakness, depression, and conjunctivitis in pigs. The picture depicting the hemorrhages and purplish discoloration of the skin. The picture showing the post-mortem finding, tonsil necrosis. The picture depicting the, mottled lymph nodes. The picture showing the post-mortem finding. Wedge-shaped splenic infarcts. The picture depicting the. Pinpoint hemorrhages over the kidney. Which give a turkey egg appearance to the kidney. Subacute form. Symptoms are similar to acute form, but less severe. Chronic form. Here the severity is less. This form may lead to carrier so syndrome in pig. In this syndrome, the cells are chronically infected, and produces persistently infected piglets. And also in these sows. Reproductive performance will be poor, which may lead to abortions, stillbirths, and deformities. If the sow gets this virus, and carrying this chronic infection, this sow generally does not exhibit any clinical signs or less signs, but they act as a chronic carrier of this virus. Once this chronically infected sow gets pregnant, three things may happen. Abortions, stillbirths. Or piglets are born with deformities. Or piglets are born with persistent infection. This type of case is termed as carrier so syndrome. In acute infection, there will be high viral load in the host system, for acute period. In latent infection, the virus is inactive, hidden, dormant inside the cell, that could not be detected, until the virus undergoes replication and causes the infection. But in persistent infection, the virus is continuously present in the body, without causing damage to the host cell. But this persistency may turn to, fatal any time. The picture showing the post-mortem finding. Button-shaped ulcers, in the large intestine, due to classical swine fever chronic infection. The picture showing the findings like, abortion, mummification of the fetus, due to classical swine fever persistent infection. Diagnosis can be done in field level or in the laboratories. Field diagnosis. Based on the history. By signs and clinical symptoms observed like, high fever, huddling, weakness, depression, conjunctivitis, skin hemorrhages, cyanosis, diarrhea, and by post-mortem findings, like mottled lymph nodes, turkey egg appearance kidney, button ulcer and cecum, wedge-shaped splenic infarct. Next. Laboratory diagnosis. For a lab diagnosis. Blood and heparin, serum, tonsil swabs are collected from live animal. In dead animal. Tonsils, 
the most suitable organ for virus isolation, pharyngeal and mesenteric lymph nodes, spleen, kidneys, and distal ileum are collected. This virus can be cultivated or isolated in lab by two ways. Number 1. Cell culture system. Porcine kidney cells can be used. But the virus does not show a cytopathic effect over the cells. So, the presence of virus is detected by immunostaining methods like direct fluorescent antibody technique, immunoperoxidase test, and by reverse transcriptase PCR. The second method of cultivation of this virus is animal inoculation. Here, rabbits is used. These are some of the laboratory tests can be done for diagnosis of this virus. For antigen detection, direct fluorescent antibody test, immunoperoxidase test, and reverse transcriptase PCR is done. Direct fluorescent antibody test. Immunofluorescent assay. Most commonly used test for classical swine fever diagnosis. In this test, fluorescent, isothiocyanate conjugated, that is FITC conjugated anti-classical swine fever antibody is used. This labeled detecting antibody is used to detect the classical swine fever viral antigen in the tissue sections, or test samples under ultraviolet microscopy. The picture at left, showing the, uninfected tonsil. The picture at right, showing the, classical swine fever virus infected tonsil, which was immuno stained by direct fluorescent antibody technique. The picture showing the, presence of virus in the tissue section, detected using immunoperoxidase test with HRPO labeled CSF antibody. For antibody detection, neutralizing peroxidase linked to say, fluorescent antibody virus neutralization test, and Yaliza is done. Prevention and control. These are the measures followed for the prevention and control of this infection. Like, humane slaughter of infected, or exposed animals, and disposal of carcass by burning, or burying. This is followed in, classical swine fever free zones and countries. Quarantine and restricted susceptible animal movement. Vaccination using live attenuated vaccine. Maintain food hygiene by proper sterilization of waste food which is fed to the pigs. Cleaning and disinfection of the premises. For vaccination, live attenuated vaccine is used. This vaccine can be prepared by attenuating the virus by rabbit passaging or by cell culture system. India has been using UK based swine fever laponized vaccine since 1964. Here, Weybridge Classical Swine Fever UK virus strain, is passaged and attenuated in the, rabbits. Disadvantage of this vaccine are. Here a large number of rabbits are sacrificed for the production of vaccine. Less production, that is from each spleen of a rabbit, only 50 doses are prepared. And here the immunization capacity was also limited to 3 to 6 months. Now recently, in February 2020, Indian Veterinary Research Institute has come up with a new vaccine, in which indigenous classical swine fever virus strain, which is adapted and attenuated in the cell culture system is used. Advantage of this vaccine over the previous one are, here the rabbits are not sacrificed for the production of vaccine. More production can be done. And here the immunization capacity is up to two years. Oral vaccination against classical swine fever. This is done as a preventive measure to control classical swine fever in wild boars. Here, the vaccine is mixed with the edible food, and used as bait vaccine. This bait vaccines are distributed by airplanes in wild areas. The right picture, showing the bait vaccine. No specific, antiviral drugs, are available for this infection. Only symptomatic treatment is done. Using, NSAIDs, and antibiotics, to prevent bacterial infections is done. With this we are coming to the end of classical swine fever. You can also participate in the quiz for this topic, by clicking the link, given in the description. Hope the lecture is informative and useful. Thank you.